afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the nice introduction. So um, first I want to spend a couple of minutes on this slide because I think it says a lot. Uh, my lab is basically part of the chemical and biomolecular engineering department. Uh, we also affiliated with material science and engineering, and uh, we are leading a project in, in, in the NCI Physical Sciences Oncology Center and part of the Institute for Nanobiotechnology. But uh, still, I speak to you in a, a School of Medicine event, and I think this is, speaks highly to the collaborative environment at Hopkins that actually enables uh, the type of research I'm going to show you. So, maybe this way. Okay. Um, our lab is basically a focusing on developing translational model systems to try and understand a complex biological processes. We specifically focus on vascular assembly and growth. So vasculature is everywhere, almost in every tissue or an organ in the body. It's delivering nutrients and oxygen. Yet the um, vasculature has a very complex structure. So from an engineering point of view, this is a very uh, complex uh, uh, task to uh, tackle. Quickly going over the structure of the vasculature, large or all the, the vasculature is comprised of endothelial cells which line inside the blood vessels and they are the, actually the cells that interact with the blood. Uh, the large vessels are actually stabilized by smooth muscle cells that allow the contraction. And the smaller vessels, microvasculature and all the uh, capillaries are uh, uh, stabilized by pericytes. So they don't need to support so much a, a, a contraction. We look at the vasculature from an engineering, engineering question a point of view. In the micro a, a, a view, we look into different a flow regimes and how they affect cellular structure. A, when these flow regimes are disrupted, this is an example for a oscillatory flow, how it affects the endothelial cells as well as the cells that support the uh, vasculature. But a lot of effort in our lab is actually focusing on the microscopic view where we have a, the supporting cell, the smooth muscle cells and another cell type it, it named a, a fibroblast that are in this specific matrix, this extracellular matrix that they are producing by themselves and making this uh, structure of, of the vasculature. Those are the endothelial cells that are interacting with, again, with the extracellular matrix as well as with the blood flow uh, in different uh, oxygen level, pH, and temperature. So all of these views, this is something that we uh, can start and look into that from engineering point of view where we'll mimic that and then try to understand what's happening and eventually, hopefully, develop therapeutic uh, targets. So uh, we study and develop different uh, materials or biomaterials which we can synthesize to present specific cues of interest and I'll show you a couple of examples what we do with that. Uh, we use human stem cells, we use both adult stem cells, as well as pluripotent stem cells, which, which can differentiate into any cell types over the body, meaning we can have pluripotent stem cells and differentiate them to endothelial cells, smooth muscle cells, as well as pericytes, and all from the same patient. We also use microfluidic devices, which are basically miniature, miniature devices of a flow where we can culture cells in them. So this is this eye view of this a, a specific a device, but we can culture cells and have these specific cells respond to different, a, 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 I would say, mechanical or biomechanical cues. I won't talk about uh, the microfluidic devices, but I'll show you a couple, couple of examples how we synthesize specific hydrogels of interest and incorporate them, with them a, in them a human stem cells to generate a vasculature, functioning vasculature. So what is a hydrogel? So hydrogel basically are a 3D cross-linked hydrophilic polymer scaffolds. They, basically they are biocompatible, biodegradable, they are mechanically uh, stable, and uh, they have a three-dimensional structure. So if you're talking about the vasculature, the vasculature grows in a three-dimensional structure. 
blood vessels develop in the embryo in a 3D uh, environment, as well as, as they grow into a, a feeding a ca cancer or tumor. However, mo most of the, 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 the materials or the hydrogel that people have been using for uh, studying uh, angiogenesis are basically those that are listed here that are naturally occurring. So there is no engineering involved, meaning there is basically almost no control of the properties and the cues that this hydrogel presenting. In, in our lab, we hypothesized that maybe we can generate these nice hydrogels where we'll encapsulate uh, those stem cells, and this hydrogel will be engineered in a manner that will induce specific signaling pathways that allows those cells to generate vacuoles, undergo lumen formation, and then network formation, which is basically called vasculogenesis or vascular morphogenesis, and happening, it's hap happening in, in uh, uh, embryogenesis. And indeed, throughout these years and all, all uh, uh, these uh, uh, studies, we actually demonstrated that we can in introduce to this hydrogel specific adhesion molecules that are going to activate specific integrin, uh, as well as a, a degradation properties, so the cells will degrade. We degrade the matrix, which allow them to form this lumen, and then stabilize into the vascular networks. We also show that when we transplant those, again, we're talking about human stem cells, we transplant those into a host in different types of models, wound models, the vasculature is actually functioning meaning that we will see flow from the host blood into the human vasculature. This is how uh, these uh, vascular network with, will look like in this completely synthetic hydrogel. Uh, this is an example of uh, uh, vessels from human adult stem cells, so uh, uh, healthy uh, patients or healthy adult. You can see that these vessels have lumen in them, different types of microscopy to analyze that. But we can also generate those network from human pluripotent stem cells. And the network that we can generate from the human pluripotent stem cells will uh, include both endothelial cells as well as pericytes. So we're talking about very small vessels. This is a 50 a micron scale. So the vessels we're going to generate are very small, which is what we want to do for a vascularizing organ with the future for transplantation. And here you can see that this is a human cells that are in red, and the uh, host is in green. And you can see that the human, the human cells basically integrate, and some of them actually are not, but most of them do integrate with the mouse or with the host vasculature. And here you can see perfusion. We can see green cells within a red uh, vessel. So this is very exciting, and what we are looking into now is how this system actually survive in a severe wound or, or tissue that undergoing extensive regeneration. Uh, we also look into how long the cells going to stay there. Are they going to support the initial regeneration and then regress, or are they going to stay there forever or for long periods? Uh, so we look, of course, into how uh, we can apply this technology and looking into interfacing with a cardiac tissue or regenerating cardiac tissue. We look into uh, two types of wound models. Uh, one is a diabetic foot wound, and the other one is third degree burns. And I always like to show this in cartoons because you can imagine the, the images are not that great. And we also look into uh, trying and understand from the, uh, the process where we're inducing vasculature of normal cells, how we can study about that in cancer. Another example, ah, sure, before that, we can also derive from the pluripotent stem cells, we can also derive smooth muscle cells. And if you remember, I showed you that smooth muscle cells are the cells that are supporting large vessels. So there is no point to have those smooth muscle cells in the small vasculature that we make in the hydrogel. Here we can actually fabricate in a different type of material, actually grafts, 
Uh, this is a graft in size of about 200 micron, and we can do that multicellular. Again, so we can see the endothelial cells and the smooth muscle cells on top of them to generate this vascular graft. Again, because we synthesize the entire material, we can control the different properties uh, such as the size, as the mechanical properties, the degradation of this, uh, the vascular graft. Another a, a, a cue that is very important in the vasculature development is oxygen. So during uh, embryogenesis, it's actually known that low oxygen levels induce new vessel formation, which is the first uh, tissue to uh, be generated in the, in the uh, embryo development. The adult vasculature, actually, within our body, the oxygen is between 5 to 12 percent. Uh, yet when we culture cells in the lab, it's basically in, in air, so it's 21%. And also there is, of course, evidence that both angiogenesis, the formation of blood vessels from already existing blood vessels, basically what happens during cancer, or blood vessel formation from non-existing vasculature, vasculogenesis, both of them are regulated by oxygen levels. So. Uh, this is basically the system that people are using uh, to control oxygen level in, their, in the lab. So what we'll do, we'll take these pet petri dishes, we'll put them in this completely uh, sealed chamber, and we'll flush very low oxygen, 1% or 5%. It has to be uh, sealed because otherwise it's going to become 21% very quickly. And we've done that, and, and what we added from our point of view, we added those little sensors that we can actually, in real time, analyze the oxygen levels that the cells actually see. And what we found, again, in a series of studies, is the cells by themselves con consume oxygen. So if you think you flushed here 1% oxygen, and this is what the cells see for 72 hours, this is incorrect because the cells keep consuming oxygen, they're getting very low oxygen supply, so very quickly what is in these petri dishes is very anoxic conditions. So we develop, and I, I won't show you that, but I, I just want to tell you that we develop these microfluidic systems, again, that we can control the level of oxygen that the cells actually see next to, in, in their very, in, uh, very close microenvironment. But because we are interested in, in three-dimensional, we said, okay, so maybe we can develop hydrogel that can mimic this hypoxic condition. And for that, we apply this specific a, a reaction a, through Leke's enzyme that consume oxygen. We managed to generate those hydrogels that forming while generating hypoxic conditions. So we can make those from different types of monomers. Here is an example of gelatin, a, which have adhesion and degradation a, a cues that we're interested in. So we can generate those polymeric chain, polymeric networks while consuming oxygen. Uh, again, because we synthesize that, we can control different parameters. And here is an example of oxygen level over time uh, with different thickness of those hydrogels, which is very simple to change in the lab. So for that, we, don't, we, you know, we use that in our incubator. Uh, this is the first generation of this hydrogel. Now we can uh, extend the uh, period of hypoxia uh, up to 10, 10 hours just by this, the hydrogel. And we wanted to see what's happening actually when we transplant those hydrogel as is uh, under the skin. And we could see that when hypoxic gels are uh, uh, transplanted, they induce much more new blood vessel growth into the hydrogels than the ones that are non-hypoxic. More interesting is that when we encapsulate with these, those hydrogel, these adult stem cells I told you about, what happens is when we encapsulate them in the non-hypoxic hydrogel, we could see some decrease in oxygen level. This is 10, 20 is what we have. And then over time, the, the uh, oxygen level increase. But when we encapsulate them in the, the hypoxic hydrogel, we could actually see that after Still 48 hours, two days, the cells in hypoxic conditions, which we here determine that it's below 3%, meaning the activating signaling pathways that are specific for hypoxic re or hypoxic regulation uh, uh, signaling pathways. 
And what we found is when we do that, actually just the hypoxic condition induced vascular network formation from those adult stem cells, and uh, which does not happen in the non-hypoxic hydrogel. So this is a, a, the beginning of the study, which we use just adult stem cells. Now we're looking into pluripotent stem cells, and they basically respond the same. What we found that what happens here that the hypoxia re actually regulate the gradation of the matrix, which uh, which allow the vascular networks to form. Uh, so this is very exciting. It's it because it's not just another hydrogel system that we can generate network and transplant them, but we actually uh, might be able to answer very basic questions about hypoxic regulations during the normal development, but also uh, during a uh, disease. Uh, uh, periods. Uh, so this is it for now. Uh, these are uh, the people that actually do all this work and many uh, collaborators from uh, the School of Engineering as well as uh, the medical school here at, and, uh, and as well as the uh, funding agencies. Thank you.